Hello friends, welcome to Word of God Fridays. Today we're finishing the Gospel of Luke and reading chapters 23 and 24 in the NIV. Uh, it's been a wonderful read and we'll be starting uh, the Book of Romans next week. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's just been good. I think I have recorded now every single Gospel, which is uh, yeah, it just makes me feel good about that. <laughs> so if you want to uh, listen to all the Gospels with my voice, <laughs> you can do that. So here we are uh, at the beginning of chapter 23. And like I said last week, uh, chapter 23 and 22 are very, um, they're kind of like, it doesn't really have a natural ending point. So uh, I think what I'll do is I'll actually start in chapter 22, verse 66, just so that there's a natural flow to what I'm reading. Word of God Fridays, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23 and 24 in the NIV. At daybreak, the council of the elders of the people, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together, and Jesus was led before them. If you are the Messiah, they said, tell us. And Jesus answered, if I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I asked you, you would not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the Almighty. They all asked, are you then the Son of God? And he replied, you say that I am. Then they said, do we need any more testimony? We have heard it from his own lips. Then the whole assembly rose and led him off to Pilate. And they began to accuse him saying, we have found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. But they insisted, he stirs up the people all over Judea by his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here. On hearing this, Pilate asked if the man was a Galilean. When he learned that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was greatly pleased because for a long time he had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see him perform a sign of some sort. He plied, he plied with him, he plied him, sorry, he plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him dressing him in an elegant robe. They sent him back to Pilate. That day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers and the people and said to them, you brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for charges against him, for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. But the whole crowd shouted, away with this man, release Barabbas to us. Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, crucify him, crucify him. For the third time, he spoke to them, why, what crime has this man committed? I have found him in no I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty therefore I will have him punished and then release him but with loud shouts they insistently demanded that he be crucified and their shouts prevailed so Pilate decided to grant their demand he released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder the one they asked for and surrendered Jesus to their will as the soldiers led him away, they seized Simon from Cyrene, who was, one, who was on his way in from the country and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number, number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, blessed are the childless women the wombs that never bore and the breasts that they that never nursed. Then they will say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if people do these things when the tree is green, what will happen 
when it is dry. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals. On his right, the other on his left, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was written, um, there was written a notice above him which read, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminal, criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said, Don't you fear God? He said, Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then, Jesus, then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. When all the people who had gathered to witness this saw what took place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action. And he came from, Ju from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. On the first day of the week, fairly early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen living or lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened, and as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them called uh, or named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know these things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked, 
about Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this take, took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning and didn't find his body. They came and told us what they had seen of the, uh, that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And, and then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said. But they did not see Jesus. He said to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And, the be and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures con in concerning himself. And as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if they were going farther, or as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in and to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. And then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. And there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. And while they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. And they were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why no, do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it in their presence. And he said to them, this is what I told you while I was with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. And he told them, this is what is written. This Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in the name, in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in a city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. I just got emotional because uh, I think as you see this, this ending here, you can see um, the juxtaposition of darkness and light and how the only way that we are not in darkness is by the illumination of Jesus and the power of the, the resurrection through the power of the Holy Spirit that we now have that Jesus says that he is going to send to them um, from his father that he had promised earlier. Um, and it, you can see it all throughout this story that even uh, what was the difference between the criminals on the cross? One cursed him, the other believed and said, do you not see this? That's the, the Holy Spirit opening his eyes. That's the difference between light and darkness. It, it wasn't the two men's difference. Uh, the one centurion who said, surely this was a, you know, this was a prophet. Surely this was a righteous man. So even to him, his eyes were opened. Um, and you see that standing in a distance, 
were the disciples because they were afraid. Their eyes had not been fully opened. And then this wonderful conversation that these two men get to have on the road to Emmaus with Jesus, not knowing it's the Lord. And then because again, he had not revealed himself and he closed their eyes. Um, and the women being the first to see and to understand and to be told that Jesus is alive. Don't look for the living among the dead. Um, and then the men going, yeah, no, they, they were right. Um, and then it says that Jesus appeared to Peter, which is extremely important when we remember that Peter had denied Christ three times. Um, and in this gospel, we don't see the actual personal restoration that Jesus gives Peter. We do read about that in the gospel of John. Uh, so just, I really hope that you understand that the difference between those that are spiritually in the dark and those that are spiritually in the light is all about Jesus. It's not about anything that you have done or I have done. It's about, has he opened your eyes to understand these things? Because they are spiritually discerned. Discerned. They are not about your intellect at all. Um, just amazing. So let's be praying for the family of God that is all across all nations, because that's who Jesus came for, not just his people, the Jews, um, but the, all of us. Um, let's keep spreading that message. Um, and those of us that are believers, we are citizens of heaven first. So don't put your hope and your trust in governments and in law. Remember um, to keep looking into the word. Next week, we'll start in Romans. May you be blessed today. Word of God Fridays, uh, the final two chapters of the Gospel of Luke in the NIV. Have a blessed day.